Hello, and welcome to the asylum. We're back. You know, we uh, we took our week long hiatus to watch something uh, superior to the asylum, and uh, now we're back doing uh, doing the thing that we in love. the asylum where I remembered why it's so good to be out of the asylum. <laughs> we're just back doing the things we love. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know if there's any love involved in this movie at all. The, uh, I think there was. There's some love in the movie itself. Uh, there's some interesting. But, there's some interesting behind the scenes stuff on this movie. Is that, there? Uh, fascinating. Oh, go on, please. Well, let's let's tell them what the movie is first. I guess. So, so we're talking about one... 2006's Snakes on a Train. Came out August 15th, three days before Snakes on a Plane came out. It is directed by Peter Mervis, who apparently goes by the Malachi Brothers. I don't know how. It's also written by Eric Forsberg, who wrote all these great early Asylum movies that we so love. Somewhat. Kind of not. Actually, I don't think we love any of the early ones. Um, it had a budget of $1 million. It's kind That's... of like Snakes on a Plane. You know, there no. are snakes in an enclosed space. There are snakes technically in a high speed train. mode of transportation yeah i guess but being that this film literally starts with like a curse making snakes grow inside a woman's body uterus yeah I'm not sure that hatch i i think um, that this i think that the snakes were made out of her like she was turning into snakes so the movie opens with two characters speaking what i assume is spanish um however I watch everything with subtitles and they didn't translate any of the Spanish spoken in this entire movie. It, any Spanish spoken in this movie, you are not getting subtitles to. So good luck on figuring out what they're saying. Unless you're like Jeremiah and you speak Spanish. And what's weird is like being Mayan, it would have been like uh Quechua, but no, mm-hmm. they didn't do Quechua. They didn't think about that much. They spoke Spanish, which Spanish. is not what Mayan spoke. Because that right. is not the indigenous language of South America. It's not the but, indigenous language of anywhere except for Spain. So this this woman has snakes growing in her. Then they come out and she puts them in jars. Yes. And she takes so, a train to L.A. Yeah. So the story is, is that <laughs> she fell in love with this dude guy and her family didn't approve so they ran away together to get married, and her family, in their disapproval, cast an ancient Mayan curse on her to transform her into snakes. Trans- and oh, right. What it sounds like is it literally sounded like they were turning her eggs into snake eggs to hatch inside her belly and eat their way out, because that's exactly what loving parents do yeah do uh so they're on their way to los angeles in order to find her husband's uncle who is a shaman and knows ancient magics in la of course yep in la LA. yeah so she takes the snakes with her in jars yeah so they have to have the snakes because they have to like put them back in her yeah, so she's just she actually, lost pieces of herself. Yeah, so she actually eats the snakes at some other some points throughout the movie. Um and then so they get on this uh they get on this train and uh then we get like a bunch of other characters that are introduced. Uh and this is like the first thing that legit bugged me about this train. I've ridden on trains before. Like I've taken mm-hmm. Amtrak from uh, Connecticut down to Los Angeles, or not Los Angeles, holy crap, down to- That would be uh, a long, long train ride. Down to Norfolk, it was about a 16 hour train ride, which is how long uh, they said this train ride would be. And here's the thing, if there are that few people on the train, the train is making stops in between to pick up more people. You're not running a solo train from Dallas to LA with no stops in between. Yeah, unless it's full, you don't skip a stop. You never skip a stop. But this train, not once does this train stop. 
It just keeps like, going. It's got skipping stops on trains. Is like when we're going to Comic Con, and once the train is full, they don't stop. Like, well, they only stop if uh, you're getting off, but they, yeah. they don't stop picking up anyone. Yeah. Um, like, who did the poster? There's a hundred passengers. No, there is not. There is uh, blonde lesbian, blonde lesbian's lover who's also carrying drugs. Uh, the two fake DEA guys. So that's four. Um, the family of three that uh, the father has a black eye that they never explain. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. The guy who may or may not be divorced, the chick the guy who may or may not be divorced was hitting on, and the young guy in the bar, and then the three surfer dudes. Well, this movie, I will say, though, does have a cast of, like, 20 people, which is better than most Asylum movies that have a name they're cast all... of, like, eight. Yeah, they're all in the movie, and they all speak at some point. Every single person in this movie. Uh, there are no and background are, And don't forget, they're also, in this movie, there's passengers, and then there are bandits. Yes. So there's a group of three uh, Latinx gentlemen that have snuck their way onto the train. Uh, who are there. And then there's Alma, <laughs> who is turning into snakes. Alma's husband, whose name I forgot. Alma's friend from childhood, whose name I also forgot. Uh, the guy who's like the ticket, ticket checker guy. And a barmaid with a horrendous accent. That's Lanny, right? I don't remember. I don't remember any one of them is quite literally the um, the writer's wife, you know. Hmm. Checks. Uh, yeah. But the only one, okay. Can I continue the going with the plot? Though? So there are characters on this train. Bandits attack, causing snakes to escape, thus endangering other people. You occasionally do actually see snakes, but then, and I like it how. Every review and everything I read about it said inexplicably, no one understands why. Alma turns into a gigantic snake and swallows said Spoiler! Train. Spoiler! I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the poster. But how many things have we seen on an asylum poster? Oh, don't worry. This that poster. Has not this poster changed the movie. Let me explain this. And so people, <laughs> some people escape and so on. Um, and one girl apparently was bitten, which is now how the curse is passed on. Because so now she's going to have vagina snakes. I guess. Um, because that's clearly how it started in the movie. No. Um, so funny thing about this one. Number one, they weren't going to be making this movie. They had no intention to make this movie at all. But an earlier film project fell through, so they said, let's make this. That's and they right. did it instead. While they were looking for distributors, a Japanese investor saw the film poster, which they had made before making the movie, and asked, is there really a giant snake eating a train? <laughs> which was not in the script at all. And the producer turned to the writer, who started writing quickly, saying, there is now. <laughs> and they did it to make Japanese audiences happy. Because they made the poster before they made the movie. The poster was the pitch. Which makes so much sense for these posters. And they wanted to make the Japanese people happy. I mean, in all in all honesty, this is probably the most accurate movie poster of any of the Asylum movies we've watched. Only because they made it accurate. <laughs> yes. Um, it says there's yeah. like 3,000 venomous vipers. On the poster it says that the 100 passengers, 3,000 venomous vipers. I think they meant 30-ish passengers, maybe, if you squint, and uh, three or so vipers at a time. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, they have, like, a falling out with the bandits because the bandit leader thinks that Alma's husband's got weed on him. Because that's clearly why you'd hold up a train. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, that results in snakes escaping and then, like, going around biting people. But, like, for a movie called Snakes on a Train, there were snakes. I will give you this. But there was very more, much more train than there were snakes. In that we had, like, 
the side plot about two girls moving to L.A. And one of them was smuggling drugs in order to make money. And then a really creepy dude claims to be what a Texas DEA, DEA agent and uh, makes her take her top off because that was absolutely 100% necessary. Um, there's like some plot with a dude who is essentially trying to do what Bruce Willis was trying to do at the opening of Sixth Sense, but succeeding somehow. Uh, he, his pickup line is literally, he goes and sits down next to this lady and asks her what time it is. And then she's like, bro, you're wearing a watch. And he's just like, huh, yeah, I am. And that somehow works. Um, I'm married now, so I guess I'll never get the chance to see if that line would work for me. Um, but apparently it worked for him. Um, there's some love struck guy who's on the train talking to the bartender. And so like they spent some time doing the, like those stories. Um, also, apparently, uh, Alma's husband has magical green vomit. But there's zero tension in this entire movie. <laughs> zero. For I don't like snakes. I will say this. I, I will give one shout out to one actor in this movie. This is the first performance of Amelia Jackson Gray, who plays Crystal in this movie, but she also was in she was also Genie in Halloween Night. Um, we've also seen her. She's gonna appear in a couple other silent movies, but she went Long on to be in Entourage, in The Mentalist, in Law and Order. And uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. Blonde Lesbian? Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. Um, I Carly, the campaign, and so on. So good for her for getting out of this movie. Um uh, there is a funny story where like, for some reason the only interesting thing they have to say on this story when you look at behind the scenes stuff, which I actually regretfully watched, is there was a day where their craft services and shooting set was invaded by a bunch of cows that escaped. And came to eat their food. It's the only interesting thing they came up with when talking about this movie. Interesting. Also, no one, like the, from the sounds of it, a lot of people were hired for this movie, for the other movie, and were just like, well, we're going to do this movie now. What was the other movie? I don't, I, I couldn't find what the other one they were going to make, they just said it fell through. Also, there was a credit on this one that I think they thought was funny, but, um, Whoever did the sound credits for this one probably shouldn't do it. Because you know how they do funny credits a lot in these? Sure. This one says, no snakes were hurt during the production of the screenplay. Only a small child was, so it's cool. I mean, we did watch a child get eaten by a snake. So are they admitting something, or do they think that's funny? Maybe uh, um, there's some investigating. No, it doesn't. No <laughs> investigating. Uh, but you know, a lot of the actors in this one. This is early. This is early one. So a lot of people have es have escaped this uh, the asylum. Like AJ Castro, who plays the husband. He's been in stuff like um, Will and Grace, excuse me, Code Black, and so on. So you know, he he's made it out relatively unscathed. But th this movie. A movie that is incredibly easy to spoof as Snakes on a Plane, which exists as a joke that people said, oh, let's do that. And they went, fine, let's do that. This feels very uninspired. Like, <laughs> like they don't care. They literally yeah. do not care. Yeah, this one is is definitely a, uh, a pointless money. And they had a bigger movie. budget than most of their movies. This is a million-dollar budget. Twice the budget of H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds. It's bigger than Gatoroid. Yeah. I'll be the snakes time. actually move in this movie versus just wiggle back and forth in the same repeat. I couldn't believe, because I didn't know the backstory on the poster, I couldn't believe that they actually had the snake eat the train. Like, with how many false movie posters Asylum has made, the fact that they actually did that, yeah, even props. But yeah, um, so overall, uh, this movie story, uninspiring. Acting is definitely not uh, not great. 
CGI. It's better than Pod People. I think Pod People had the worst acting. Battle Star Wars had the worst acting. I don't know. Pod People. Okay, Pod People had the worst audio to go with bad acting, so it all By sounded bad. Far. Let's By put the microphone far. by the AC unit. <sighs> what could possibly go wrong? Um, <laughs> yeah, this movie is just not worth anybody's time or effort or the time and effort that the actors put into this movie. Uh, I feel bad for them, in all honesty, especially the girl who took her top off. Like, I am finding it really funny, though, oh. that people are comparing this to Maximum Overdrive in a reviews. No, Maximum Overdrive had a better budget, and and uh, it's more hilarious because I just definitely coked up Stephen King versus when you suddenly clean. Um, Good old coked up Stephen King. But mm-hmm. there's this movie's really bad. And I think what makes it even worse is it's boring. There's no camp in here. Like, like, the Gatoroid was fun because there was camp in it. Like, ridiculous yeah. camp. This is Even uh, there was a chick fight, fight, two chicks fighting in tight dresses for no reason. There's I would no camp honestly, here. I would honestly rather uh, take the possibility of being forced to vomit from watching uh, Monster again than ever watch this movie. Like. I would, I would rather. At take least Monster it. had acting that was passable, and at least they had a story that made sense. It yeah, just, yeah. the camera work was vomit inducing. Yeah, I would rather the vomit inducing camera work of that movie again than ever watch this movie again. This movie is. I took this down with Pod People. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I, I hated Pod People. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> For those that's, of you. So I can't share my picker wheel. Oh, right, because you're on a I'm on the web version instead of um, on the other one. But okay. let me try spinning this sucker, and hopefully we pick one that's not like belly fruit or something. It was a 9-11 commission report, since we're all looking forward to that one. Honestly, the weird thing is, review-wise, that one's actually like very solid. Come on, but, Amityville. Come on, Amityville. Come on, Ready? Wheel of Asylum, turn, turn, turn. Tell us the movie that we shall burn. 100 million BC. <laughs> what? 100 um, million. This is probably 10 million BC mo- uh, spoof. Like 12,000 BC. BC? I'm, hey, what? a movie I like, but... I don't know if I'd care to watch a spoof of an already silly movie. Let's see if it's even watchable somewhere. Three. One oh, hundred million. Roku, Tubi, million Pluto, and Freebie. It's on everything. Yeah, it's on everything. Ah, that means we have What's to it see. about? A scientist from the failed Philadelphia experiment, which is weird. I want to see that. I actually queued up to watch the Philadelphia experiment, a movie from a bit ago. Leads a team of Navy SEALs. Oh, yeah, the Navy's represented again. You know, they yeah. do really well with that with the asylum. Back in time to the Cretaceous period to rescue the first team he sent back during the 1940s. Wait, they sent the team back in the 1940s, so they wait 50 years to send Navy SEALs? Things go awry, though, clearly. When on his return, he accidentally brings a giant man-eating dinosaur back through the portal and into modern-day downtown Los Angeles. That doesn't sound like 10,000 B.C. at all. No. Did they watch no, the same not. movie? The caveman movie with di- with murder birds. When did that movie come out? About the same year. Two thousand eight. Uh huh. It's gotta be a spoof of it. It is. It is clearly a spoof of it. But wow, wow! It stars Michael Gross, who. Everyone knows from Tremors. The best guy in Tremors. Like the one who stayed through all of the sequels mm-hmm. and went out. And actually a pretty good hit. The, the final Tremors movie, Shrieker Island, was actually pretty legit good. And with the budget the size of most Asylum movies, puts all these Asylum movies to shame. Yeah, I watched that with my dad when we went to visit him. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, Shrieker Island surprisingly good. Especially after the ice one they did before that, Cold Day in Hell. But, so it starts him... 
So at least I know, you know, that uh, we're going to have Bert Gummer with us. Bert Gummer. Undercover Random Guns. You better. And uh, a bunch of people who were in that pod people movie. Oh, good God. All these females in the pod people movie are in this. They're, they're, that, that gives us the strong possibility of another lesbian sex scene. So there is that. On that note, though, next time we're going to watch 100 million BC. You can watch it on, well, anywhere yeah. you can get free movies. Tubi, Roku, Freebie, Pluto. Pluto. And I guarantee you it's going to be a, a movie. It's going to be it's going to be a movie. It's going to have a beginning. It's going to have a middle. It's going to have an end. Hopefully. It might not have an end worth talking about, but it'll have an end. That is true. It will at some point cease playing. Thus, it's a movie. Um, but on that note, uh, okay, thanks. Bye.